sitting here making little claws up. I like it when the Bible says that there's nothing new underneath the sun. Now, with men, we're always trying to come up with something new or, or something happens and we say, man, that's never happened before, so we need to come up with a rule in case this ever happens again. All this week, if you're sports fanatics, the deflating of the football. We all know that the NFL now is going to come up with a rule. We've never had this to happen before. But with God, he says, nothing underneath the sun is new. So I need to tell you that no matter what's going on, no matter where you're at, God is not in heaven trying to make up a rule for you. His word has already settled it forever. That when you come to God, he's not in a hurry, he's not in a pace, he's not having a board meeting trying to figure out how to deal with you. He did it through the blood of Jesus over 2,000 years ago. That blood sacrifice, that blood sacrifice, settled it so now our faith what we're about to do is we're about to mix our faith and turn it over to the anointing and the anointing breaks bondages and destroys yokes now what I want to say about the anointing is this the anointing is a powerful powerful force faith is amazing without faith we can't please God we need faith in our everyday life that's something we need faith is something that we can grow in and get more of because the Bible says little faith or great faith he even tells his disciples oh ye of little faith so, so it's not that they didn't have any faith they just had little faith so that tells me that there's some things that takes great faith to move. And there's some things you can operate on little faith. But the anointing, it doesn't come in as little or great. It just comes in as the anointing. So when the anointing of God begins to move, it breaks bondages. Get a hold of this and destroys yokes. You know what a yoke is? A yoke is something that you just put on old mules. Put on mules so that they can guide them. They can maneuver them left to right. The Bible says the anointing will break the yoke of the enemy that you will not have to listen to him to move right or left anymore. It said that the anointing will break a bond is that you will not be hindered or hampered down anymore. My daddy said it like this years ago. This is what he said. He said, when you feel the anointing, now I'm, I'm, I'm working myself up here to get to this place. He says, when you feel the anointing, that's when you start to pray and you begin to call things out. I'll come in here many a times and I'll begin to pray. You know how many times I've hit my knees and I prayed and I don't feel anything. I pray because I know that's my job to pray. And in the middle of my prayer while I'm praying, I get these things called goosey bumps. And they begin to move all over me. And when they move on me, I know that the anointing has showed up. Now, I want to teach you something here. Take this valuable lesson. When that anointing shows up, I get bold. I'll be on my knees. Then I stand up. I start pacing. I start walking. I start calling things. I start calling money in. 
I start calling jobs in for family members. I start calling healing in. I start, I start placing it, strategically placing it underneath that anointing because what I have done is I have just opened up the airways of God. The anointing now has moved through my body, as Brother Rod said. It's using this vessel now to come against the enemy. And so what I'm praying now underneath the anointing, I don't have to wait two weeks. By faith, or by the anointing. And the difference is praying for you by faith is I lay my hands on you and by faith you're going to get it next, next day, two days, three days. That's by faith. I'm believing by faith. Underneath the anointing, it's done. Plain and simple. The anointing doesn't play around. It comes and breaks bondages and destroys yokes and brings. So the anointing clause. When we take these to people or we put, we take them for ourselves, they begin to break those spirits. Notice it drove out evil spirits. The things that you're fighting against right now is an evil spirit. And I want to say this, and this, this is kind of crazy. It might blow your mind, but it's the truth. It's just the truth. Look at your neighbor and say simple truth. You're already healed. You're already healed. The manifestation of the healing hasn't come, but you're already healed. The blood of Jesus didn't shed so that you might one day get healed. No, it, it was shed so that you are healed. He's conquering King Jesus. He's not still in the battle trying to get you to win. He's already won. You are victorious. You're not getting up every day hoping that you win. You get up as a winner. You get up already as if you had just, just, just money in the bank. If you know anything about WWE, it's money in the bank challenge. You get up every day. Money in the bank. What the enemy tries to do is sidetrack you with all these different things. Get your mind off of it to make you think that you ain't. But when the anointing gets involved, it bypasses your feelings. It does it for you. <laughs> it rushes through. And that's why we need to work underneath the anointing. That's why we need to sing underneath the anointing. That's why we need to play underneath the anointing. That's why we need to preach underneath the anointing. That's why we need to be a father or a mother underneath the anointing. That's why we need to walk into our job underneath the anointing. Listen to me. Everything we ought to do is underneath the anointing. The Bible says, with all thy getting, get unction. Unction means the anointing. He said, with all thy getting. Get the unction. So if there's anything I need today, Lord, it's the anointing. Jackie, come and help me, please. Rod. I've got a few of these made up. If there's not enough for you to get one, we can make one if you got your own. But anybody would like that would like to have one, we are going to anoint these with oil. Y'all can do that for me. We're going to anoint these with oil. This is for you to take to your loved one if they're sick. This is for you to take to your friend if their marriage is in a, in a bind. This is for you to take to your loved one if they need a job. This is for you to carry around with you if you're fighting personal things in your life. This is to put in your wallet. This is to put in your purse. Sir, this is to, to hand to your boss. Ma'am, this is to hand to your friend.
In 1998, at a small meeting smaller than this, we prayed over a handkerchief. A lady that was in the hospital, she was 83 years old. Something going on with her spleen. They called all the family members in that day. We prayed over the prayer cloth. We got out of service in time to get to the hospital before they shut everybody out before they couldn't get out. It was 9 o'clock before they wouldn't have any visitors. And we got in just before that. I was just a young preacher. 1998, I just started preaching in 1996. I remember walking into that room. I was about 20, 27 years old, 26, 27 years old. I walked into that room. And I'll never forget the face of that young lady, 83 years old, laying in the bed. She looked at me. And you could just literally see that she just, just didn't have much time. And I held up a prayer cloth and I said, we prayed in church and I want to bring this prayer cloth. I said, I would like to put it under your pillow. Can I put it under your pillow? She said, yes. I put it under her pillow and I prayed. And I left. I called back the next morning to check on her. She was still there. She was still alive, still complications. I called back that afternoon to check on her. She was still alive, still complications. The next morning I called to check on her. She wasn't at the hospital. She'd been released. She had been sent home. And she lived to be six more years. I'll never forget what I learned underneath that, underneath the power of a prayer cloth. I'll never forget. I was thinking just the simple thing of this prayer cloth that changed my whole everything. It made me a believer of what the anointing can do. I took prayer cloths to work. I put them on people's stations that I worked with. I led them to Jesus two weeks later. I sent prayer cloths home from my revivals. When I started revivals, people would take prayer cloths home. People that was diagnosed was now being healed. Heart problems were now being healed. I've seen marriages restored. Church, I'm telling you, this is real. This is probably more one of the more real things that you'll ever face in this church right now. Prayer it's not old-fashioned or out of date. It's just the church has used other things as a crutch. And we haven't used our power underneath the anointing. We can do all things. The Bible says, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Jesus Christ, Christ was not his last name. Christ means Messiah, teacher, anointing. You could say it like this. Underneath, with the anointing, I can do all things. With the anointing, everything's possible.